Hello friends! Throughout history, millions of people have won at casinos. Some have done it beautifully, some not so much. Some have won a pittance, and some have won millions. Some have won legally, while others have used scams. But it was no secret that in gambling, the casino would always win. All the combinations were calculated with perfect precision, and the casino would never be in the red. At least that's what everyone thought, until one day this man shows up at a casino in Madrid. But before you watch this video, it's worth mentioning that gambling is not the best way to get rich, as customers are often left without their honestly earned money, and it's always worth keeping that in mind. The man we are going to talk about today did things at their best. He was winning handsomely and most importantly, he was winning a lot. But more importantly, he did it completely legitimately. The name of an ordinary pensioner from Spain, Gonzalo Garcia Pelayo, has gone down in history forever. After all, he is considered to be the menace of all casinos, and many even call him a legend. So what did he do? That's what I'm going to tell you today. Gonzalo was born on May 25, 1947. In his youth, he fell in love with mathematics. He wasn't a genius, of course, he grew up as an ordinary boy, but he always had an aptitude for the exact sciences. He spent the first part of his life quite modestly. He got a mathematical education, although he did not use his skills until a certain age. Gonzalo worked as a sound engineer and producer. Basically, he had an ordinary life. He had a beloved wife and five sons. Life went on as usual and the man was probably fine, but when he was in his fifth decade, everything changed. No one really knows what happened. Some say that his eldest son gambled heavily, owed a large sum, and the father decided to restore justice. Others say that Gonzalo simply wanted to teach the system a lesson and that he had a sporting interest. Others assured that he had been hatching his plans for several years. In the early 90s, the whole world became aware of an ordinary man. At first glance, it would seem that roulette is a game of choice. The ball thrown in the spinning drum takes one of 37 possible positions. The human factor, as in poker, is eliminated. Gonzalo, however, did not think so. With his mathematical mindset, he saw the world around him in a different way. At first glance, Gonzalo always projected trivial things into formulas and calculations, and he was sure there were no accidents. The only question was how to pick up the key. His story had its origins in an establishment in Madrid. Gonzalo became a regular customer, but no one saw the man in the game. He simply took his favorite drink and watched the croupier at work for a long time. According to the usual mathematical calculations, each number was supposed to fall out and average the same number of times. But as he thought, it was not as simple as that. The observations did not agree with the calculations. Some numbers fell out more often, while others fell out very rarely. The information he already had, according to his calculations, did not give him a chance to win. But Gonzalo did not stop there. Using his education, he set himself the goal of creating the perfect system at all costs. Initially, he worked on his own, going to the casino and taking notes and in the evenings making calculations, from the number of throws to all sorts of other factors, but nothing worked out for him. Each successive calculation was doomed to failure. Then the man decided that the initial data was not enough for a detailed analysis, so he used up all his resources. In addition, the casino security service began to watch him closely. All five of his adult sons had by then become his eyes and were helping their father. Garcia Pelayo's family would come into the casino and make a careful note of the sectors where the roulette ball stopped. One son would record the results at one table and the other son the results of another table. So the amount of information received increased by exactly five times. He had a very simple idea, but he had not been able to get to the bottom of it. Gonzalo was firmly convinced that there was a pattern to everything. The main thing was to understand it. But our hero was not only a mathematician, he had developed a phenomenal power of observation. When Gonzalo realized that the calculations and the real results did not add up, he began to look closer at the roulette tables. He noticed that the shiny surface of the roulette wheel reflects light unevenly. From the glare, he calculated the approximate slope. 
he had to count the spins to identify the unstable turning. If the tape measure made a different number of spins left and right, the drum was defective. He also realized that any tape measure is first of all a man-made device, which means that like any other mechanism, it contains some physical defects, which were already created at the production stage. For example, he discovered that even a deviation in slope of one millimeter due to an uneven floor covering in the balance of a tape measure wheel can produce some random numbers more often than others. After collecting statistics, it was possible to identify those very lucky numbers. With the help of his large family, he would collect dossiers on each individual roulette wheel and then transfer them to tables he had prepared, and then into a computer software which he developed himself. Let me remind you, it was the early 90s. At that time, a computer could already give a head start over a man. As it would later be established, the mathematician recorded a total of more than 10,000 throws. It took him a year and a half and a five-member team to do all this, and yet he got to the bottom of it. After loading the data into the computer, he found a few sectors where the ball did indeed stop much more often than in other cells. The theoretical part of the job was just a small matter. All that remained was to forge the perfect system that would give the greatest advantage in the game. And it didn't take long. The most important task of gathering information was already in hand. He determined how many throws on each reel he needed to record. He then took into account the amount bet and the odds of winning. It's hard to imagine the amount of time and effort it took to do all this analysis, but Gonzalo was simply fired up by the idea, and within days he had a strategy in place that would give him an initial mathematical lead of 15% over the casino when he played roulette. It doesn't seem like much, but it's actually a very big handicap. The rest was just a matter of technique. The mathematician started his game in late 1991. He entered the casino that day as a man of average means, but he came out a rich man. No, he didn't win a million. His first score was very modest, winning just 600 euros in today's money. The bottom line was that the strategy was working, which meant that everything was yet to come. And the very next day, Gonzalo won several thousand. History repeated itself a day later, and the next day too. He and his family regularly visited the Grand Madrid Casino one of the largest and most advanced casinos of the time, which is still successful today. He exploited the weakness of the roulette wheel set up there. Casino staff, security, and gambling specialists called in to help carefully watch over Gonzalo's game, but could not understand his secret. It seems that nothing unusual. The client does not break anything, but always wins. Of course, the casino bosses were not going to put up with the humiliation for long, and after a while, they simply stopped letting him into the casino. By this point, he had already redeemed them of several hundred thousand, but the mathematician wasn't the least bit upset when he learned of his exclusion from the ranks of visitors. He decided to attack the new casinos in Las Vegas and Europe, where he could already play big. But before he left for Las Vegas, he sued a casino in Madrid, Looking ahead, a few years later, he did get them to pay him for moral harm. He and his family have traveled halfway around the world, gambling in Las Vegas, Australia, Austria, Denmark, and the Netherlands, winning a total of around $1.5 million. Some say it's not much, but it's only official figures, the amount that was later reported by the institutions. But experts say that by the most modest measures, the family was able to provide themselves several tens of millions of dollars. The fact is that many casinos would not admit it, as they did not want to tarnish their reputation. And some just did not realize because by then he was still a dark horse and no one knew either him personally or his sons by sight. But sooner or later, all secrets are revealed. Over time, Gonzalo's scheme did not go unnoticed. The mathematician was even placed under surveillance. Security service of large network casinos monitored every step of the family so they could not beat the other casinos or hired special people to do so. In the mid-90s, the defrauded casinos sued the mathematician demanding their money back as they believed it was a fraud and demanded that the scammer be imprisoned. They were simply convinced that they were right. The lawsuits against Gonzalo lasted more than a decade, but the litigation, which only ended in 2004, brought a smile and a bewilderment to the faces of thousands of people. The trial was quite high profile and ended in a victory for the mathematician. 
the Spanish court rendered a decision that was not subject to appeal. Moreover, the judge advised the casino owners to keep a better eye on their equipment. Gonzalo was not recognized as a fraudster as the prosecutors wanted. The money won was left in its entirety to the former sound engineer. Gonzalo's wealth of roulette experience and the hours he spent in the casino were a great experience. Together with his children, he opened an agency dedicated to gambling analysis. He's often called in by the most famous chains who need his advice. Among other things, he now also conducts expert assessments of virtual casinos. In this way, the ordinary mathematician's personality has become very well known. The story of his family's exploits has inspired writers and filmmakers. In 2003, a book called The Great Story of Pelayo was published in Spain, and in 2012, director Eduardo Cortes made a film called Pelayo. He was able to make several million dollars from these projects. As for modern roulette, you can't beat them that easily anymore. The quality of reels, deflectors, jumpers, and even balls has improved dramatically, which means these effects are much rarer. It was after the Spaniard that the demands on manufacturers from casinos became stricter. You could say he turned the industry upside down. As Gonzalo himself said in an interview with a journalist, everything in this world has its unique shapes, flaws, and imperfections. It's only a matter of time how long you have to watch it. Even your actions have their periodicity. The main thing is to understand what event preceded it. This is the story of an ordinary mathematician who became world famous as the man all casinos were afraid of. What do you think of his strategy and story in general? Be sure to write your opinion in the comments. It'll be interesting to hear it. That's all for now. Rate the video if you like it. Bye.